Of Reclaim today. I'm Lauren Brumfield, an account manager at Reclaim, and I'm joined here by the Reclaim hosting co-founders, Tim and Jim. Um, and we're just going to do a quick, uh, or at the point of this episode is to just do a, almost like an interview, but a set of rapid fire questions that these guys can answer to give an overview of the history of Reclaim, but also introduce the Reclaim Hosting co-founders to new and future employees. Um, so this is going to be added to some of our internal documentation as well. But I think it's also going to be cool to share these answers externally as well. So um, it's cool that it's going to be on a uh, Reclaim Today episode. I'm ready so, for it. And I've got the best background of everybody. So yeah, we go. exactly, exactly. That's arguable. <laughs> you do, but it's arguable. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jim's the only one wearing the Reclaim Hosting shirt, so I guess you win from that perspective. I wasn't told that oh, this was going to happen. Branding. This is not, I wasn't I'm told. Brand. As a co-founder, I'm on brand. I just want to say that. I'm a team player <laughs> in that I wasn't told we were doing this, so. Yeah, you're flexible, Tim. Okay, all right. Are you guys ready for the questions? Ready for and just so you know, these are a compilation of questions that I came up with, but I've also received from Meredith and Judith. They've kind of come from all over the place. So I say that to say, don't blame me if you hate them. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, this one is for both of you all to answer. Again, these are rapid fire, so don't feel like you need to talk forever, <clears throat> Jim. Um, and <laughs> Wow. In, two, in two sentences or less, what is Reclaim Hosting? Jim, is this for me? Anyone. Okay. Anyone. Okay. I thought it was for uh, Either one. I'll say it's basically, uh, what do we call it? Indie web hosting for higher ed. Okay. A, yeah, a web hosting company where people can carve out their digital identity. Cool. Okay. Uh, when was Reclaim Hosted? Founded. July 2013. Special day. <laughs> was it the 27th or the 29th? I think Tim and I have a little bit like, we forgot when our baby was born. It's like, is our baby? What's the birthday? The 27th or the 29th? And we sit there and we bicker. Oh, you don't care about our baby? <laughs> it was a process. Did we, do we count when we signed the papers with the court and we became married? Or how does that work? <laughs> yeah, when did that happen? When did you sign the official paperwork? I think it was July 27th, Tim. We can go back and check, but that's what I'm going to throw out there. Or the 25th. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> say that. You guys are horrible parents. Okay. Yeah, terrible. Um, where did the idea for Reclaim Hosting come from? Came on the train back from Emory. Tim and I were coming back from Emory University after giving a presentation about what we were doing at UMW with Domains. And we started talking and I basically said, I think we do this for schools like really <laughs> he was like really and we did right is that right Tim maybe although a lot of it too came out of what you were talking with Audrey Waters and remind me the other folks you had sort of this idea of like reclaim your domain as yeah, sort of a broader right. vision than just a hosting company but it kind of played into the same thing and that was at a hackathon right that you went to in April that's right and that's when we got the name right that's when reclaim hosting is the name kind of came together but i think the kernel of the idea was when we were coming back for emory not yeah. to mention all the work you did with hippie hosting and domain of one's own at umw previous to that i think when we said we can turn this into a, a, a viable enterprise 
for me, the moment seems to be on the train. Right. Because as you, you know, like, as I tell a lot of people, I think the, the thinking was we were doing some awesome stuff at UMW. A lot of other people wanted to be able to do similar things and their IT departments just wouldn't play ball. They, they were just sort of, you know, like they could never even come to them with such an idea. And so they were sort of like, I really want to do this, but I can't. So, you know, I was like, why couldn't we do what we were doing with hippie hosting? and sort of offer it up as a domain of one's own for everybody. And that was long before we were offering a full-on domain of one's own setup for schools. At that time, it was just, we'll buy a server and we'll just let people sign up. Yeah. So at that point, did you is that when you realized that Reclaim Hosting would be something special? Or was there another defining moment where you, you could really see the future of Reclaim beyond just a, a, an institutional project that you were running? Well, I don't, a little boy. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I don't, <laughs> I don't know where you were about to go with that. <laughs> I don't think in the first couple months we thought this is going to be this massive thing. We did start it as a business from day one, but we very much were honest with folks and said, this is an experiment. We're just going to try this out and see where it goes. And I, I think we probably thought we'll try this for a year play around with it. And I think we probably balanced between, wow, it would be amazing if tens of thousands of people signed up. And yeah, that's probably not going to happen. So this will just be an experiment. We'll play around with it. Um, you know, experimenting, you know, on the web and running projects like this was pretty much at the nature of what we were doing at UMW anyway. And so like separately from that, we we're like, why not just give it a shot? But I don't think we probably ever thought we're going to like leave our full-time jobs, be able to hire employees and run a company long-term from the get-go i think you know yeah. if i had to if i had to put a timeline on that i think it probably got a lot more real you know eight months into it or so especially as we started talking to schools like university of oklahoma and they said that's great what you're doing now can you run us a domain of one's own infrastructure and we were like wow they have like 30, <laughs> 35 thousand students yeah. like that's a big deal and not only they came on but we had three other schools that came on in that in that second year 2014 and they were running Domain of One's Own programs similar to what was running at Mary Washington through us. And we we're like, wow, this is actually, this could be a sustainable business. Yeah, I think that's right. I think it came real that summer of 2014 when Tim and I actually had like a thousand bucks in the Reclaim Bank. And we were like, okay, that was fun. We did everything for 12 bucks. We, you know, we gave hosting away and a couple of thousand people signed up and we kind of learned a lot. But then we didn't like that wasn't sustainable and we were going to still run it, but at 30 bucks or 25 bucks. But when schools started to come to us and say, we want to take that and we want to run domain and ones on, on our campus, we were like, oh, wait, <laughs> like yeah, this is a viable right. model. And yeah. uh, I think that changed. I think, you know, soon after Tim went full time and then a year later I went full time. And uh, that was, you know, that, that was a turning point. Oklahoma, Davidson. CSU Channel Islands and Emory were the first four. And by the fall of 2014, we were like, wow, <laughs> like, we actually are, you know, doing something here that's, you know, possibly, I guess the first time Tim and I talked about, okay, I'm going to go full time. It was like, Tim was like, I'm ready. I wouldn't have done it. Like my whole thing was like, I would have stayed at UMW my whole life. Like I was a lifer. Um, that might've gotten hard for other reasons, but the regardless, like, I was like, I'm not going to like leave academia. But Tim was like, I'm going. I'm done. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, really? You didn't leave your job? I've been here 10 years. And he's like, yep, I'm gone. And so that kind of gave me the, the, the push I needed to say, well, maybe I'll follow. And I did. So. so you guys sort of already mentioned this, but how did the name Reclaim Hosting come to be? There's a, a couple of stories there. I think. I think that goes back to Boone Gorgeous and Dr. Norman, frankly. They had a whole series that they did was about reclaiming, but their idea of reclaim, their two bloggers, WordPress developers, uh, IT folks, or instructional technologists. One is from um, Alberta, Darcy Norman, the great, and one is from now in Chicago, uh, the great, great Boone Gorgeous, who also is a core WordPress developer. Anyway, those two were blogging about reclaiming everything like making everything open source, getting everything off of Google, getting everything off of like, you know, Amazon, just kind of going pure, right? Almost like a, you know, a caveman diet for tech. And uh, they were talking about it and they called it Reclaim 
or reclaiming, you know, their kind of presence. And I like that term, but obviously reclaim was not about so much about reclaiming all of your, making sure everything's open source from like, you know, the kernel of your laptop. So we, we were talking about this idea of reclaiming your domain that Tim said at an MIT hackathon sponsored by Philip Schmidt at the Media Lab there. And I give credit to Audrey Waters and Ken Lane who were talking about this idea of reclaim your domain. And that's when we kind of talked because they were very into domain of one's own. We were doing that. They were excited about that. This idea of reclaim came up. And then at that point, reclaim your domain became the idea of what would it mean to give students more control over their domain and their data, which is something we were already doing at UMW. So when I came back and Tim said to me, I mean, it was a very tough time in my life too. And Tim came up to me and said, are you back? Because I had been in other places. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you back? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I want to start a company. Like, I want to do this. I want to start it. And that's when the name was like Reclaim Hosting. And that was a, it was, I don't know. I mean, Tim probably has another story on that, but he probably, he does have a good story about that. Tell the, the server story in South Carolina. <laughs> well, so we haven't talked about hippie hosting much. We've made reference to it, but like you said, we were running a server already. I was running a server, um, you know, like with Darcy, uh, Norman and Alan Levine was in there and there were a whole host of folks. Michael Branson Smith at your college had his students on there. And it was very small time. I mean, there was never more than 90 people on the server total. Uh, it was really meant to be like a server co-op, but I kind of fell into the role as the administrator of it. It's what helped us understand how we could do this at Mary Washington. Uh, and I was still running hippie hosting at the time. And that summer I went on vacation to Myrtle Beach and the server crashed and everybody's stuff was down. And, and like, to, it's funny to think about this today because like today, if, if Reclaim Hosting had a server outage for an hour, that would be a serious thing. We would be like, what is going on? Like if it's down more than five minutes, we're like all hands on deck. Uh, this server with hippie hosting was down for two and a half days. <laughs> during my vacation in Myrtle Beach. And so like, you know, uh, and, you know, oh, sorry, I can't go to the beach because I'm over here like frantically on the computer trying to figure out what's wrong. An entire hard drive had crashed. I had to restore from backups and, and get everything back online. And this is only for like a handful of people, but it was, you know, in my eyes, important people. And it's always important when you've got people's <laughs> web lives at stake with all of their photos that they've uploaded and everything. It, it ruined my vacation uh, that year. I, I, I came back from that saying, screw hippie hosting, screw hosting in general. I am never doing this again. And Jim goes, so I got this flash grant and I was thinking maybe going back to that idea, <laughs> you, you could start a hosting company like you were talking about. And I was like, really? Really? <laughs> Right now, like, you know, it's July. I just came back from vacation. Like, I'm, I'm ready to shut it all down. Uh, and, you know, this probably speaks to how compelling Jim can be sometimes. But uh, we, you know, like we were talking and I was like, fine. Why Why not? You know, <laughs> sure. Let's do it. So I think you were a little bit more, I think as the story might say, you were more like, I'm ready. Like, I don't know <laughs> what got over you, but like, you were not going to be beaten. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, for all intents and purposes, that first year of Reclaim, which was defining, you know, we gave it away, the Chronicle picked us up, like we got attention. Mike Caulfield, big shout out for him. He lent us, literally gave us $9,000. He had just sold his house in the event that we blew up and we couldn't afford domains because we were doing this on a $600 budget. And he was so cool. He was like, yep, you can have the money and then just pay me back in a month. And we did. We didn't need it because we didn't blow up like that. We paid him back. Um, that was, was like our start fee. <laughs> like, Mike Caulfield was our VC. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was the friends and family round, as they call it. It's <laughs> amazing. So. Okay. Uh, next question. Why does Reclaim Hosting have a VHS tape for a logo? I think Jim should talk about the console living room to discuss that. Yeah, this is, you really are digging in. Like, do you want two, two sentence answers? Yeah, um, these are meant to be rapid fire, but obviously say what you need to say. 
Well, I think the funnest thing, so Tim already mentioned it. Like when we were at UMW, it was all experiment all the time. And I don't think Tim gives himself enough credit. When he was there, he came in in 2011. He started when we were doing DS-106, The Summer of Oblivion, which I think is awesome. But then he went on to start DTLT Today, which is like Reclaim Today. It was a constant. We did like 114 episodes of video production. Then he went on to start Hippie Hosting. Then he went on to actually start the main of one's own with Martha. So it was just like in a matter of a year and a half, it was this really feckin' period of creativity. Well, as Tim was getting ready to leave and the group was changing and people were moving on, the last thing we did kind of at UMW was we created a console living room, which was an 80s living room. And we bought VHS tapes. We bought a TV. We brought Michael Branson Smith in who actually – programmed the TV with a day of ABC television for 24 hours, which was amazing. And that broadcast from a little broadcaster onto a TV so you could change channels and really be on an actual old TV. Anyway, it was, I think it was one of the cooler things we'd done. So when we left UMW and we moved to Reclaim Hosting, the whole, or moved to Cowork, a co-working space that we got, we had this empty storefront. And Tim and I were batting around the idea, and I kept on saying, oh, we should really start a VHS store just as a kind of museum like the UMW console. So not an 80s living room this time, but an actual 80s VHS store. And <laughs> that took more convincing than to even get him to start replaying <laughs> hosting. I think it took like six to eight months for Tim <laughs> to finally say, wait, this is a marketing opportunity. And then we did it. Um, and so we have a, a VHS store and we've been using that conceit for the last year to talk about us as trailing edge technology and really having fun with it. But also, and I think Tim could speak more to this to kind of re, you know, reclaim is six years old almost now, but the first three or four years, as you know, Lauren, very well, <laughs> pretty much 24 seven us doing support to keep people coming back. And that's happened. And so finally, we feel like we have a little space to play again. And the VHS store has kind of become what we had at UMW, which was like an incubated classroom. But I'll push it over to Tim now. No, I think that covers it pretty well, actually. Cool. Okay. Uh, what is the process, if any, for naming shared hosting servers? Mm -hmm. So when we got our first server, I kind of wanted to play off of something that, you know, uh, Jim had to coined this term ed edupunk. Um, you know, as part of, you know, it's in a Wired article, it became this whole thing. Um, and people can look up what edupunk means and what it became. Just to have a little bit of fun with it, I thought, you know, when we were thinking like, oh, what could a server name be? And I thought it would be fun to name it after bands. Why not? So uh, I named our very first server Clash. And uh, so Clash ran for, you know, many years, but for the first year, obviously for everybody until we bought our second server, which came a couple months later, and I named that one Ramones. And so we kind of got into this feeling of, you know, we would find sort of 80s and then later even 90s, you know, sort of punk rock bands. And so that's where the names come from. And there's everything from Devo to Out of Step, some that have gone away, like Joy Div for Joy Division, um, Beat Hat for Beat Happening. Uh, so, you know, that's where the name comes from for all of our shared hosting servers is punk rock bands and, and even more loosely termed just rock, rock bands in general. What does the, what does hashtag for life mean and where does the term come from? <laughs> for life? You mean, yeah. well, really, we're going there. This is awesome. For life was the kind of, was the cult sign <laughs> of DS 106. DS 106 is a whole nother avenue we haven't talked about. I mentioned it briefly when Tim, so when Tim comes to work at UMW, the first day, the very first day, we are live broadcasting like we are right now, one of the final episodes of um, the Summer of Oblivion, where Martha Burtis basically breaks down, like literally <laughs> breaks down. And it's part of her character, so she really wasn't breaking. And Tim was walking into this, he was on the show with her. First day, he's like, what is going on? And that was basically our, you know, DS-106, our digital online, our online digital storytelling course at UMW that became kind of a phenom, where it became an open course that built a community around the world for people to share stories, to kind of create memes, to play with animated GIFs. 
And the for life idea was basically like, you don't really need to be part of a school or a class to do this. You just got to be kind of in it. Like you just kind of want to play and be for life, like just be into it. So it became a kind of fun calling card. Um, but that's what it means. It just basically means like locked in at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to add, Tim? Or are we good? We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are your roles at Reclaim Hosting? Mm. So I'm one of two co-founders, me and Jim. Um, you know, we've kind of fallen into our various strengths, I think. And so if I were to, and we've, we've kind of avoided um, that sort of C-suite of like, I'm the CTO or something like that, but we have kind of fallen into these various roles. And so I guess you could probably consider me sort of like a chief technical officer. I'm, I, when it comes to the technical side of things, uh, server infrastructure, new developments in terms of technologies and things like that, that's sort of um, what my role is in the company. Yeah, and I think mine would be, you know, basically, uh, I'd like to say probably the good looks of the company. I'm, I'm the attractive one. Uh, I basically do what I always do. I blog. Um, I, Lauren, you and I now are actually kind of doing the account management and working with people to onboard them. And we do the outreach. Um, we're the ones who communicate with existing companies. I mean, existing uh, universities, but also when new people come with interest, we're the ones. And we're like... I kind of think of myself to some degree as kind of uh, the partial face of Reclaim, but not entirely anymore. And I don't want to be. That's one of the things I think is important that Reclaim isn't about one person or one thing. It's about a team. And I think we've been good as a company about building a sense of team and a sense of like, we're all doing this. And like, it's all kind of part of who we are and where we come from. And the history is fun, kind of. But the history can be a little solipsistic because <laughs> like, it could be like, you know, people come out for life. You're not really a punk rocker or whatever. You can really get into like the the, the weeds with that shit. So you got to kind of mind. But... Jim also handles a lot of the finances for the company, which he didn't mention. But it's also a really important thing because if I were the one balancing the checkbooks, we may not still exist. So I, I'm not <laughs> so great at it and don't keep a really good eye on it. So... Um, that's also another very much a strength of his. <laughs> it's not stressful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your favorite part about being a Reclaim Hosting co-founder? I love it. I mean, I just love the fact that we did it. And that like, I mean, you it's hard to find someone who you can, can mesh with creatively and also pragmatically and get the job done. And then to also start building a team and feel like people who are part of it feel an investment in it and then be able to do fun stuff. So I just like it. I feel like it's a lot of what we built at UMW DTLT. Like it was a community of people trying to do creative things and support a community. And I love that. I love that when I think about what I do at UMW, like I support faculty, students, and folks who want to do shit on the web. And I really, really like that. I, I, I can go to bed at night and be like, my job's pretty cool. Yeah, I would I would say the same thing. For me, it was sort of two factor in that one was being able to take the awesome stuff that we were doing at Mary Washington and, and open it up to a broader audience and still do it in ways that I think are really a lot of fun. And the other piece to it to me that's been super rewarding is people like you, Lauren and Meredith and Judith, and like really playing a role in building something that people can see their own future as employees in, which is, you know, it's something I never had the opportunity to do before. And, and it's, you know, it's humbling and rewarding for me for sure. Very cool. Okay, so similarly, what is your least favorite part about being a Reclaim Hosting co-founder? <laughs> I could probably answer this for both of you, but I want to hear your response. The buck stops here. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know this is going to sound conventional, I guess, but like, like, I don't know. I mean, I guess the thing is that's different. Like with UMW, there were times to really go on vacation or step away and feel like I'm away from it. I never feel that way now. Like I always feel plugged in. Yeah. And not even as much as Tim. But I always feel plugged <laughs> in. So I think, I don't know if I miss that because that's the kind of person I am too. But 
I think sometimes it would be nice to feel like, all right, I could step away <laughs> for two days and not even think about it. Yeah, I I I would agree there, and it's it's not a, a bad thing necessarily, but it's part of growing a company, right? And so I've I've often joked to my wife and said, you know, if there's ever a future beyond reclaim, if I ever retire from reclaim and still feel like I want to work a job, it's going to be one without an email address. I, I need like a bartender position, or you know, I'm like serving you know Big Macs at McDonald's or something like that, where there's like you clock in, you clock out, and there's zero responsibility after you've left the office because that's very much not the way it is right now and so but that's okay yeah okay uh jim if you had to describe tim in three words what would they be Uh, i always say it he's a quick learn and i've said that from the beginning like i've never seen and worked with anyone really um who just picks stuff up so quickly so sharply and then makes it happen uh, so for me, I've always, and I've said this to him, he's probably not hearing it the first time. He's just a quick learn. And that's really important when you're doing what we're doing with technology and you have to pick it up and you have to be able to adapt so quickly to the things that change. And I think that's been a defining quality in why Reclaim has excelled, right? So quick learn. That was more than three words. Okay. <laughs> a quick learn. <laughs> I want to explain what it meant. No, I, I, I'm just giving you a hard time. Tim, same question for you. If you had to describe Jim in three words, what would they be? See, I got the benefit of waiting a couple seconds so I could think through my answer. Um, <laughs> you know, for me, for me, it's uh, that he's a charismatic champion. Um, Jim, even since I was working in Mary Washington, is good about lifting others up instead of himself. And um, that was very clear to me, you know, in, in the way that I was working. And it was huge to the way I worked. Uh, and it's still the same way today. He will he will champion others. He will champion what other schools are doing. Um, anytime he's blogging and talking, you'll see the links to everybody else that he's referencing. And he's very careful about doing that anytime he's talking um, about the work that he's doing. And so that's how it goes. And a charismatic champion. Cool. I love you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jim, what is your favorite thing about working from Italy? And do you ever see yourself moving back to the States? Yeah. Cool. Uh, Good question. Um, States, I, I maybe like I, I can't rule that out. Um, and I spend m- enough time between the two that I don't miss America in the same way. But what I really like about um, when I'm in Italy is I really like my ability to get into the nature and walk and just basically have time to think. And I think it's made me. I think talk about good things, whatever, bad things is I wasn't always the most stable character (laughs) in the the stable. Um, So having a regular routine and being able to walk and kind of feel that sense of stability, which I didn't, when I was in the US, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't exercise, I wouldn't. So I really like being in in a situation where I can kind of take care of some of that. And I think it makes me a better colleague and a better person and just healthier. So I guess that really has nothing to do with Italy, but it has very, everything to do with like carving out a space of my own, a domain of my own. <laughs> and Tim, why did we, why did Reclaim Hosting choose Fredericksburg as the location for our office? And do you ever see yourself moving out of Virginia? I've thought about it, but you know, so we moved up to Fredericksburg, obviously, when I started working in Mary Washington. Um, And, you know, so we were pretty much locked into the area. And when I left Mary Washington, it just made sense to stick around. My wife had a full time job, she still works as a kindergarten teacher. Uh, And so I wasn't really going anywhere. And I'm very happy with the area. And it's just kind of snowballed from there. We started the co working space, we've kind of got sort of a home base here. Um, I, you know, like Jim, I'm not going to rule anything out for the future. Uh, but I think for the for the short term, I'm, I'm very happy in the area. It's the right level for me um, coming from a, a much smaller town when I was in college and working professionally afterwards, Farmville, Virginia. Uh, <laughs> it, it's the right level for me of city life without it being like Northern Virginia craziness but you're close enough to DC and those kind of areas. So I really enjoy the area and I'm very happy with it. So I don't have any plans in the, in the short term and wouldn't rule anything out in the future, but I'm really happy at the moment here. 
Okay, this question's for both of you all. Name three items that are always on your desk. Oh, I now have an answer for that. I just <laughs> got a new desk. A turntable, an album, <laughs> and speakers. Always on my desk. For me, yeah. at the moment, it's an HDMI cable, <laughs> a... Uh, a charger cable for my phone and a VHS player. Uh, but that's really <laughs> mostly because my desk is wherever I'm working at the moment, uh, which could be in here, it could be over there. I don't have a permanent desk in the co working space, and I kind of prefer it that way. I've got sort of a spot that I kind of stick around at um, that's more of like a standing area, but otherwise, I'm just kind of moving around and doing a lot of stuff. Jim, why is your blog called Baba Tuesdays? Nice, Baba Tuesdays. Uh, Baba Tuesdays comes from a movie night in Brooklyn in 2001. Soon after 9-11, we were living in Brooklyn, and a couple of friends came over, Matt Gold and Mikhail Gershevich. And we were watching a Mario Bava, and it happened to be a Tuesday, and we were all kind of recovering from 9-11. And one of the things we joked about is we need to do a Bava Tuesdays. Like, every Tuesday, watch a Bava movie. Never happened. But I just love the, the idea of Baba Tuesdays. And I originally thought if I ever started a band, it would be a band name. But it's not. It is actually a blog name. But just to give you an idea, Baba stands in for Mario Baba, who's an Italian film director who made films in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And he made a lot of horror films, and he was kind of a B-movie god. He's like the Alfred Hitchcock of B-movies. And Italian. Okay. Question for both of you, what is your favorite movie of all time? Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really hard one. I'm not the film buff that Jim is in terms of that, in terms of old cinema and stuff like that. So it's probably something really uh, ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so for me right now, it's probably Labyrinth, David Bowie. Yeah. And I probably would say either The Shining or The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. That okay. would be. Uh, sorry, I interrupted you. Um, okay, what's your favorite sticker on your laptop? Oh, I've got to check my laptop to see. <laughs> I'll hold it we up here. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of reclaim ones. Actually, you know what? The one I'm most proud of, and I actually need to get back into it. Um, these are stickers for Spartan races that I ran. Uh, and I actually did several a couple years back. I need to get back into it. But those are, um, if anyone's never done Spartan races, they're like obstacle mud course races. And they can be extremely taxing, uh, especially for a man of my size. And so <laughs> uh, I'm very proud of those. <laughs> yeah, I think I really like the Reclaim stickers, the Be Kind Reclaim you saw on Tim's, also the Reclaim Hosting vinyl, the new VHS. I just think we've we've had a lot of fun and done a really good job with Brian Matters about framing out some of our some of our aesthetic for our company. So I love that stuff. Cool. All right, we're almost done here wrapping up. Um, if you were going to expand any portion of Reclaim Hosting, which can include Reclaim Video, Reclaim Arcade, Cowork, et cetera, what and how would you expand? Did somebody say Reclaim Arcade? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I, it's weird. I'll start, Tim, you finish. Because <clears throat> we've gone down this rabbit hole of Reclaim Video, which is a VHS 80 store, which we talked about. We now have 12 arcade games, and Tim has become somewhat proficient in fixing them, which is insane. But so we have like the beginnings of an arcade that I mean, just it's a boyhood dream to actually have 30 arcade machines from the 80s at work. But I think if we were talking about reclaim hosting, which is what makes everything possible, I always would be interested in the idea of what would it be if we started to think through what an API infrastructure which helped us manage media and moving media from something like Instagram into another space, like kind of being a, a kind of, we called it like a reclaim media, right? Like a, ability to think through broadly work like. That's not on our, that's not something we can even imagine. But if it were talking about the reclaim stuff, um, working more directly with 
some of the API infrastructure that's out there to allow people to take, to really reclaim some of that stuff from those social networks and either archive it or bring it into a space that they can control more and kind of be a little bit more elegant. So that's what I would think in terms of the reclaim hosting stuff. Yeah, I mean, mine's along a very similar line. I think, you know, we've experimented with um, different ways of running alternative applications going beyond cPanel. And cPanel has been sort of our infrastructure for a long time now. And obviously WordPress is still king, but there's a lot of interesting software out there that can be very difficult to run. Things like Manifold, Editoria, um, you know, Ghost even, although now people can run Ghost on shared hosting. But there's there's a lot of these apps out there, particularly not so much publishing side, but collaborative apps, things that kind of mirror what you do with Google Docs and things like um, like Etherpad and that kind of stuff. And so yeah, I would love to, yeah, exactly. So I would love to continue to push on this idea of collaborative tool set type applications. And that may involve, um, and require new infrastructure, new technologies, and stacks in order for that to happen, uh, while while keeping you know to our core ethos, which I think is that we want to push towards open source. We want people to own their stuff. We don't really want to hide it all in the cloud and have people just press a button and it automatically exists. We want them to still have access to that core infrastructure. So there's a balance there. Totally. Cool. All right. You kind of have already answered this, but in my last two questions of uh, focusing on the future of Reclaim, what are you most looking forward to on the Reclaim hosting roadmap for 2019? For me, this year is all about building up our support in a way where I can start to step back and start thinking about those larger picture ideas of what we have. Uh, you know, my I, you probably got the sense that Jim and I do a lot of work after hours. Uh, you know, I actually think it's almost seven o'clock there right now, given the time difference. Um, so, and we answer a lot of support tickets. And so for me, we are hiring part-time positions right now for customer support. We brought Judith on this year, who's our customer support manager. And we've invested a, a lot and continue to invest in our support infrastructure, which I think is going to help me and Jim step away and start thinking of these bigger picture questions. So that's what I'm excited about in 2019. Yeah. And, and that's, we've been very intentional about that together. So absolutely. I mean, that's a good thing about Tim and I, like we are pretty much lockstep in what the future is. And we spend a lot of time communicating about that because we know it's important. And Tim mentioned it earlier. It's like, we're not doing this for just me and him anymore. Right. Like we want to build a team. We want to have a community and a crew and like, we want it to work for everybody. So. Wow. No one's excited for the domains conference. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I'm very excited for the main campus, but you know, leading up to it until it happens, I, I can't say that's something I'm looking forward to more than I'm dreading. Conferences are a lot more fun when you get to go to them as an attendee. And you don't have to plan, <laughs> and you them, don't right. have to plan it. So, yeah. All right. Last question. What's in store for the future of Reclaim Hosting beyond 2019? Again, partially answered, but. Yeah, you know, I think for us, it, it's really about continuing what we're doing. We've never been the kind of company where we're we're trying to forecast like massive amounts of growth. Uh, in fact, I think that would probably stunt our growth is to say like, oh, we want a bunch of VC funding and we're going to blow out this whole market. Uh, we've just continued what we're doing and grown over time. And so I don't have any huge plans in the near cycle here you know obviously i've got visions of what we could be five ten years down the road um but you know in the next year or two i think it's just continuing to get the word out about what we're doing and the the ways in which we can help solve problems for it departments for ed tech groups for faculty and other individuals working with their students so i think just continuing to get the word out to make our systems better and make it easier for them yeah I, I entirely agree with that. I think it's like what we used to say when we worked together at UMW. It's just about doing the work. Like we got to wake up every day. We got to answer the tickets. We got to support people. We got to let them know who we are and what we do. And we don't, I love the idea, like Tim said, that we don't take VC funding and we've never taken a drop of investment funding because we are our own company. We decide our fate. And I think that makes us a little bit more agreeable to our community. Um, you know, and transparent about who we are and what we do. And uh, 
and I don't know. And I think I think our, our our business is built a lot around values and values that are near and dear to both of us. Anything, everybody at Reclaim. So, and I think that would be interesting for people like Judith or new people who are coming on to say, what does that value system look like and how do we communicate it? I think the value system, and we've mentioned this on Slack already today, is blog. <laughs> if you don't blog, you should blog. If you haven't blogged yet today, blog. Are you blogging? I want you running a video call and blogging. <laughs> I'll blog about this afterwards. But uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for this. This is, you know, I've been with Reclaim for a couple of years. And even still, I, you know, I've heard the story of Reclaim more times than I can count. But even still, it's great hearing you guys talk about it together and talk about your relationship and just your um, goals for the future of Reclaim. Um, so thank you very much for Absolutely. your time. Uh, and with that, I'm signing off. <laughs> bye bye, y'all. See you later. Bye bye. Reclaim for life. <laughs>